Welcome everyone to our Wednesday Bible study. We are glad that you are with us this evening and we are going to talk tonight about how to deal with conflict based upon Philippians chapter 4 verses 1 through 4. And so hopefully you have your Bible uh, nearby and and we'll um, we'll hopefully have an opportunity to uh, to be challenged by God's word tonight and and to help us to have a stronger faith and and as we're striving to love the Lord and to uh, love each other. Now, in an ideal world, we would never have any conflict with anyone. We would always get along with everyone. Everyone would uh, be happy with us. We'd be happy with them. There'd be no disappointments. There would be no frustrations. There would be no difference of opinions. There would be no problems. And uh, everyone would just happily and peacefully and joyfully uh, get along at all times. Well, obviously that is just uh, not going to happen. Uh, the reality of it is, is that uh, we are human and uh, we tend to uh, be, we tend to be selfish. We tend to be greedy. We, we tend to be impatient and uh, not to say that all conflict is a result of those things, but uh, when conflict does arise, it, it does challenge our our values. It, it challenges our ability uh, to uh, maintain a sense of faithfulness and maintaining a sense of of peace uh, and joy. Uh, I'm convinced that some people thrive on drama and conflict. I, you know, <laughs> I'm convinced um, that some people just get bored with uh, with calmness. They get bored with peace and. And it's as if they get so riled up with peace that they have to go around and, and create some conflict just to have something uh, to argue about. Well, hopefully that's not our style. But uh, the Apostle Paul in his writing to the church at Philippi is addressing a situation that evidently has caused a, a great a bit of concern and commotion uh, as he uh, names two of the uh, Christians there who are having some uh, some problems and uh, and and so this is what he has to say and I'm in Philippians chapter four, beginning in verse number one. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown. That is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with Euodia and I plead with Syntyche to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say it, rejoice. These two Christian women evidently um, were had a difference of opinion about something. Uh, there was something that happened. We don't know all of the details, and uh, but evidently it got to a point where Paul felt as if he needed to address this um, to hopefully uh, create a, a soothing atmosphere as soon as as possible. And uh, these two folks evidently had some type of, of disagreement and. Uh, the, the New King James Version says to have a, a sound mind uh, in the Lord. And uh, the NIV here uh, talks about, or well, says to agree with each other in the Lord. Now, for Christians, ultimately we have the opportunity to rejoice in the Lord always. That's what verse 4 says, right? Uh, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I, I say rejoice. So no matter what is going on uh, in our lives on a circumstantial basis, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, we uh, joy is something that we have the opportunity to experience. Uh, joy is not based upon what anyone else does or what we do ourselves, but joy is based upon what Christ has done for us. He has died on the cross he has taught us how to live our lives and he has given us forgiveness and he has given us reconciliation and opportunity uh, to be connected uh, with him in the Lord, with his 
death, burial, and resurrection. Um, he has conquered death, and he has given us hope. And uh, we look forward to that day in which he uh, returns. And, um, and, and so as Christians, the way that we're going to be able to manage conflict, the way that we're going to be able to agree with each other is in the Lord. Okay, that's the key, that three word phrase in the Lord. And uh, because we are in the Lord, we have a mutual interest, and that is the salvation of our souls and the salvation uh, of others. Um, in the Lord, we have an interest in the in the church, who, uh, which the church is, of course, not a building. It is the people. And the church has the opportunity to worship the Lord, has the opportunity to work for the Lord and, and uh, by, by serving others. And uh, we don't want anything in our lives, uh, any of our wants or, or uh, ambitions to get in the way of the work of the Lord. And, and uh, when Christians are in conflict with each other, it not only creates havoc for them uh, personally, but it also creates havoc and it, it, it tarnishes, uh, it potentially has the uh, ability to tarnish the, the image and the reputation of the church. And uh, that may slow down the work of the church and um, most drastically could potentially uh, result in someone not being a part of the church as a result of uh, being discouraged uh, by um, um, by people who claim to be Christians who are just always in uh, conflict with uh, each other. And, and, and so we want to be uh, of the same mind, okay? So I, I want you to think about, okay, uh, maybe someone you have been in conflict with. Um, what, what can you, a starting point is to try to figure out what do we agree on? Well, you may be saying, well, I don't agree with nothing they're doing. I can't agree with anything. And uh, okay, but I'm specifically thinking about two Christians that may uh, be in conflict uh, with, each, uh, with each other. And by all means, this could be a Christian husband and a Christian wife or, uh, you know, uh, other relationships uh, as, um, as well. But the key to deal with conflict is uh, number one, and we mentioned this already, is to always focus on this opportunity of rejoicing in the Lord. There is nothing in this world that uh, of temporary nature that may upset us. Uh, nothing in this world should be able to be, uh, have a, nothing should override our sense of joy as a Christian. And so we need to focus on rejoicing. And then number two, we need to, to focus on the relationship as well okay it's not <laughs> it's not a matter of who is right or wrong okay um it's a matter of the relationship now uh, i don't want to misspeak here and i don't want you to misunderstand me there are some things that are, are right and wrong and when it comes to morality uh, of course there is a right and a wrong when it comes to you know church doctrine or doctrine biblical doctrine that's from the word of god there is a right and a wrong um you know, how we become christians the bible has those types of, of teachings but the this type of conflict that seems to be um, is more of a seems to be more of an interpersonal conflict that um has the opportunity um, uh, He's pleading for the Euodia and Sinti to agree with each other in the Lord. So there is some opportunity uh, to come to some sense of agreement uh, and to settle differences and uh, based upon how important the relationship is. Uh, we are a family. The church is God's family. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and yes, yeah, sometimes we're going to do some things that are uh, disruptive or upsetting and but we don't want to get so caught up in the uh, the issue at hand that it sat, it it destroys the relationship in the process the relationship between two people 
is more important than the difference of opinion uh, or the more important than the issue itself. Um, people who are Christians and are acting in a Christian way uh, understand the difference between addressing the problem as opposed to attacking the person. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of temptation involved when conflict arises in which we just start assaulting or attacking um, another person, either physically, verbally, or emotionally, where we just go out and we, we just go to war. We're on one side, they're on the other side, and they become enemies. And as results of it, um, the relationship uh, is severed. Uh, I remember uh, talking to some folks a while back, and um, basically this fella had, he had said that, um, over 30 years ago, he and this other person, um, who he was very close to, um, they stopped speaking to each other. They haven't spoke to each other in over 30 years. And here's the thing. This guy can't even remember what it was that they got upset about. And, um, but as a result of it, uh, the relationship, um, has, uh, has, has suffered. And, uh, we we want to be able to to focus on the people who are involved. So rejoicing relationship and number three, uh, focusing on the reality of the situation. Here's the reality. Are you ready? You're human. I'm human. Everyone's human. We're not always going to agree on everything. We're going to have our difference of opinion. We're going to have our different perspectives. Sometimes we, I, sometimes people feel like we got to agree all the time on every single thing, and um, but that's not the case. In fact, sometimes it's important to be able to agree to disagree. I, I remember uh, sitting in on a meeting, uh, all Christian fellas. Um, this is a while back, and. And uh, I knew there was going to be uh, some uh, difficult things uh, being discussed. And, and I remember this group of Christian fellows, um, I believe this was back at, uh, during undergrad college days. And I, I forget exactly what year uh, it was, but it's probably something, um, probably second or third year or so. And uh, it's probably social club related of some sort. But I, I remember that this potentially contentious meeting it started off with prayer and the issues were discussed and essentially they decided to agree to disagree. The meeting ended in prayer and then they went and get something to eat as if uh, the, everything was okay. And I just remember uh, hearing about that and thought, man, I just thought they'd all be enemies at the end of that conversation, but no. Uh, Christian folks know how to handle each other or handle a situation in which they can uh, understand the value of rejoicing. They can value the relationship and then accept the reality that we're not always going to agree on everything, but we can come to an agreement together on things associated with being in the Lord. I, uh, there's all kinds of potential uh, <laughs> application to this agreeing with each other in the Lord. Uh, husbands and wives need to agree with each other uh, in the Lord. Um, you know, <laughs> not we won't always agree on things in regards to, to politics. We won't always agree on things in regards to the virus. Uh, we won't always agree to to things in regards to our kids and their activities, including whether or not to send them back to school or whether or not to let them ride the bus or whether or not. And we're going to have all kinds of different things that we differ on. But as Christians, no matter what, we have the opportunity to be of the same mind, to agree in the Lord. So remember to rejoice always. Remember the value of the relationship and remember also that uh, reality, the reality of it is, is that we're different people with different perspectives, but that doesn't mean we need to be in conflict with each other. 
Rather, we love others to a point where it doesn't mean we always have to get our way. And sometimes by a little bit of listening and a little bit of communication, that could certainly go a long way to maintaining a sense of healthy dynamics between others and to help move past this interpersonal conflict that could potentially disrupt us and also disrupt the work of the church and uh, and others as uh, as well. I, I hope this lesson has been helpful to you. We will continue next time. Philippians 4 is an outstanding chapter. We're going to be camped out here for a, a little while, but I uh, hope each of you have a great rest of the day. Uh, take care and God bless.